Hello, my name is Jean-Jacques Nantel. The night Donald Trump won the US presidential election, the whole world discovered a very large chasm separating the American nation and its elites. Half of the Americans voted for Trump, despite the fact that almost all the media, the journalists, the, the pollsters, the businessmen and the artists kept talking against him. Anybody who listened to uh, the American left during that election got the impression that the election of Hillary Clinton was certain. For the left, that was inevitable since they controlled uh, the, the traditional media and could flood the nation with fa fake news, false polls and innumerable uh, politically correct insults against Trump who was supposedly a racist, a sexist and xenophobic candidate. But it didn't work. Voters voted for him anyway, essentially because they trusted him and uh, liked what he said. During that election, the, the left in USA made two basic mistakes. First, they believed their own propaganda. For them, it was a, an established fact that the Democrats were the good guys and the Republicans a bunch of bigots. Second, they forgot that you always need to make a very meticulous psychological preparation of the population if you want to deceive it uh, 100 times with the, the same age-old arguments and cliches. Democrats were sure that the growing non-white population in USA and the guilt felt by the, the white majority would allow them to get elected the first black president, that was Barack Obama, and then a woman, that was Hillary Clinton, and after that a Latino, an Oriental, a Native, and why not, the case from now, a Muslim. Unfortunately for them, that, that series of records stopped with Donald Trump. If white Americans voted twice for Barack Obama, it was because they wanted to get rid of racism in USA, not because they wanted to see the end of the whites, which is, of course, pure 24 carats racism. The Internet played a very important role in the surprise victory of Donald Trump, mean, mainly because it gave to his supporter free access to uh, news and data which were not polluted by the usual mass media propaganda. Thanks to the Internet, the average citizen is now aware that the polls and the, the official statistics on unemployment, inflation, the national debt or the, the, the economic growth are more or less made up. He understands that the American elites will never hesitate to sacrifice his own vital interests if it makes them feel good. As a result, he stopped listening to their politically correct sermons and voted for the best available candidate. This time it was Donald Trump. The Democrats also lost because of the disappointing two mandates of Barack Obama. In retrospect, Obama did very little. He did not even close, as promised, the torture center of Guantanamo. His poor achievements are to be compared with the extremely high expectations his election had created in the country and abroad. The Democrats also made the mistake of choosing Hillary Clinton as their uh, presidential candidate when uh, a large proportion of the population thought she was a corrupt and scheming politician who would do and say anything to get elected. Donald Trump kept calling her Crooked Hillary. Her past involvement in uh, many uh, scandals and controversies and her years as a state secretary uh, also played against her and she didn't even conceal her disdain for those who disagreed with her. She was the one who, who said that half of the Donald Trump's supporters were deplorables. During the campaign, Trump used very cleverly his own personal qualities. First, he looked more presidential than Hillary Clinton. Second, and that was extremely important in a country of winners like USA, 
he always talked and behaved like a winner who had uh, who had been very successful in business. He is a self-made billionaire in uh, on television with his very popular programs and even in politics since he won the Republican um, uh, presidential nomination uh, despite the quasi unanimous opposition of the Republican Party establishment. Donald Trump is also very intuitive. From the beginning of his campaign, he decided to throw everything he had in the balance to please the American public. He kept saying whatever he thought, wherever he could, especially when it was politically incorrect. He had understood that the Americans, like everybody else in the Western world, are fed up with political correctness. Political correctness has degenerated so much during the last decades that it became a criminal and often violent ideology that preaches openly anti-white racism. It is more and more obvious in the USA, where many of its propagandists no longer demand color blindness in the, in the political arena. For them, whites are evil. End of the story. They no longer try to distinguish between the good guys and the bad guys. By fighting that ideology and against the establishment, Donald Trump looked like a modern uh, Robin Hood who was fighting alone to defend the interest of the middle classes. His campaign slogan, which resonated so loudly in the American soul, was Make America Great Again. To say that Clinton got more vote than Trump in that election is not a valid excuse for her defeat, since Trump is a winner who played his card uh, as efficiently as possible to win the election. In other words, if the American political system had been different, Trump would have played his hands differently and would probably have won anyway. We must also take into account the fact that the Democrats organized that election and that many voters complained about the irregularities they noticed on election day. The fact that a pretty large proportion of the American minorities voted for Trump can also be credited to his intuition. Trump understood that many American immigrants came from conservative cultures and liked the, uh, the law and order ideals he promoted. This is one of the reasons why 29% of the Hispanics voted for him, despite his promise to build a wall along the, along the Mexican border. Apparently, Hispanics also don't like anarchy and drug traffickers. Uh, as usual, you can always verify the data I use with the bibliography I will put at the end of this video. The victory of Donald Trump is all the more astonishing because he, he was and still is alone. As I said, he doesn't really have the support of uh, the Republican Party. In the future, the fact that Trump is alone could be his biggest problem because in the past he has been so busy with the development of his enterprises that uh, obviously he didn't have a lot of time to think about what he would do if ever elected president. Blinded by their own propaganda, the American liberals uh, had to wait till the end of election day to notice the gigantic tsunami that came from the deepest of the American soul to give the Republicans not only the presidency, but the majority in the Senate and in the Congress. They were so stunned by their defeat that uh, they quickly concluded that the American voters had been stupid and did not understand what they were told to do. Some even said that a new election should be called to get the results they wanted. Those people who for decades kept flooding the media they control with their own fake news now want the state to take the control of the internet 
in order to eliminate the fake news coming, for example, from a faraway country like Russia. In other words, they would like the, st the state to restore their former lying monopoly. If the Internet played a significant role in the present uh, revolt of the, the American middle classes against their elites, the fact of the matter is that the main cause of that revolt is the rapid decline of USA in almost all domains. Since the middle classes lost a lot of jobs and money uh, since the, the financial crisis of 2008, it was normal for them to vote for a man who proposed simple solutions to their very complex problems. Unfortunately for them, the America of John Wayne and Fred Astaire that Trump would like to resuscitate is gone forever. I'm talking about that young and vigorous America who fought and won a world war on four faraway continents, who conquered the moon and defeated communism. I'm talking about that America that who suffered so much in the depression of the 1930s and the following war, that they made the mistake uh, all the, new, the nouveau rich make by raising its many children in wealth and comfort. The parents of the baby boomers didn't know that by doing that they were creating a decadent generation made of rebel without a cause uh, similar to the self-pitying James Dean of the 1950s. Decadence, and especially moral decadence, is the natural product of history in a country which has been too rich for too long. Decadence is a cultural adaptation to an excess of wealth, an excess which can never last for long in a universe where energy and wealth are naturally rare. Because our ancestors evolved for 4 billion years, in a world where danger, shortages and hardship were commonplace, we are very well adapted to survive in such an environment. But we are very poorly adapted to live a life full of pleasure, waste and overconsumption. When human beings are submitted to such an abnormal uh, environment, they degenerate and they start destroying wealth. A behavior which, of course, quickly brings back poverty. Decadence never disappeared altogether uh, in history because there were always some rich people. It's the proportion of rich people inside a nation which decides if that nation will survive or not. It's a matter of proportion. This is the reason why poor nations like the Chinese or the, the Egyptians survived since uh, prehistory, while their rich um, royal dynasties rarely survived more than uh, a few centuries. Ancient Egypt, for instance, has been ruled by uh, about 30 dynasties, and China by at least 13 dynasties. In the case of China, it's not that easy to count the number of dynasties. When, for whatever reason, the proportion of decadent people becomes important in a nation, the nation itself becomes decadent and everything starts to implode, mainly because, on average, people start consuming more than they produce. In particular, the children they produce are too few, too lazy and lack courage. In other words, quantity and quality disappear at the very same time. Decadent people always do the same two things. They destroy useful resources and they put the normal values upside down. If they destroy uh, useful resources, it's because they never learned what poverty and suffering really mean. They are afraid of nothing. For them, having as much fun as possible is the main goal of their lives. As a consequence, the wealth accumulated by their ancestors quickly disappears, the fertility rate collapses, people get older and older, the, the economic, technological and uh, military advances of uh, their country vanish, etc. To have more fun, 
decadent people always consume the totality of what they produce themselves. Uh, and they start consuming a large proportion of what their few children will produce in the future by uh, creating huge national debts and by letting the national, the national infrastructure of roads, bridges and buildings fall into disrepair. In order not to feel guilty of anything, decadent people put the normal values upside down. For them, almost everything their hard-working ancestors considered evil becomes good and uh, evil what they said was good. The creation of such a philosophy is the almost inevitable consequence of uh, any dec decadence because uh, the values of those who destroy wealth are the exact opposite of the values of those who create it. This is why decadent people applaud the perverts who don't hide their true nature, uh, but keep insulting the mothers of uh, many children by saying they are worthless since they don't earn any real money. Of course, when you destroy wealth like that, poverty quickly comes back and those who do produce wealth start revolting against those who destroy it. As I said before, this has been one of the main causes of uh, Trump's success. The term baby boomers could not be more appropriate to uh, name the first generation born after the Second World War since they never stopped behaving like spoiled babies. Most of them never suffered and don't even know what, what it means to be uh, hungry or to be scared all the time. For many, the most frequent dilemma they had to resolve during their childhood was to decide what ice cream flavor they would uh, eat. When they reached adolescence, baby boomers started to destroy the wealth accumulated by their ancestors by promoting the famous make love and not war or the, the other famous sex and drugs and rock and roll. For them, tradition, taboos and restrictions were oppression and progress was to eliminate them. They never stopped inventing new rights and freedom for themselves, but without ever accepting the idea that they also had duties and responsibilities, because, you know, they were brought into this horrible world without their consent. When they reached adulthood, the baby boomers put together all that nonsense to create the consumer ideology called political correctness. The funniest thing about them is that they keep complaining about the stress and the suffering they endured during, uh, throughout their lives. Oh yeah, that's true. Life was much easier for the older generations. For instance, on the boat, on the boats that transported their fathers and grandfathers to the carnage during the two world wars. Finally, when they, uh, they approached early retirement, the baby boomers considered themselves as zeros because they had worked 30 years and had only two children. And those who remained childless uh, believed that it was their inalienable right to be paid big fat pensions by other people's children. I even heard some of them who dared saying in front of their children that uh, most probably the mess they had created would destroy the national economy, but only after their death. These days, it's difficult not to compare the crumbling USA of the 21st century with the superpower it was at the end of the Second World War. USA was then producing half of the world industrial output and was the world leader in almost every single field. Within only one generation, the baby boomers found a way to destroy it all, to consume all the wealth accumulated by their ancestors during 400 years of hard work. Daniel Hannan got it right when he said that the baby boomers are a generation that has never been told no. Donald Trump has been the very first father figure who dared telling them no. The baby boomers found it so shocking and scandalous that 
that since election night, many say they hope he will be assassinated. Of course, that wouldn't change anything, since the crisis that produced him would produce another demagogue like him, and a demagogue who could be much more dangerous. Donald Trump is only a symptom. He is not the disease. Even if he really wants to solve the American problems, he will be unable to do so for three very fundamental reasons. First, he cannot bring back the good old days because the environmental crisis I'm talking about is very real. It will be global and permanent, at least in a time frame humans can comprehend. We are simply too many on the planet for the available resources. At the beginning of the 21st century, the Americans must compete with more than 7 billion other people to buy the resources they would need to maintain their very high standard of living. It's a big problem because all over the world, every nation uh, is working hard these days to recreate at home the rich industrial way of life USA has been promoting for decades. And they do that by asking much lower salaries. Contrary to what happened in the 1950s and 1960s, the American economy is no longer competitive and bleeds cash and jobs at an alarming rate. The second reason why Trump will not succeed is because the uh, USA is already out of money. To maintain artificially their standard of living, baby boomers borrowed and printed trillions of dollars for decades. They created the national debt so gigantic that they will never be able to repay it. The federal government cannot even pay the interest on that debt. It runs uh, a huge annual deficit which is only added on the debt already accumulated. And this is in a context where the Federal Res Reserve maintains artificially low the interest rates. There is more. The baby boomers also created huge debts at the state, municipal and individual levels. The rest of the world knows it and is more and more reluctant to buy American bonds. All over the world, investors know that the situation is getting worse every day in USA because of the ever-growing cost of the big fat pensions the governments and the companies will have to pay for decades to the millions of retiring uh, baby boomers. And don't forget that every retiring worker is a double burden. He stops putting money into the, in the, into the pot and starts taking big wad of cash out of it. The third fundamental reason why Trump will fail is because he himself is a dinosaur of the 20th century who wants to use the financial tricks of that century to jumpstart the 21st century American economy. He just doesn't have the trillion dollars he promised to spend to renovate the country's infrastructure. He will have to print it. Even worse, he also wants to reduce, mass massively reduce the tax burden of Americans in order to, to uh, boost their consumption. The very traditional theory behind such a move is that increased spending will uh, create a strong economic recovery that will automatically increase the government tax revenues. In other words, economic growth will solve all the problems. That idea comes from the long gone uh, epoch when USA was a net producer and exporter of goods and services. The inevitable consequence of all the money printing Trump will encourage will be to create inflation and much higher interest rates, a move uh, which will cripple even more uh, the, the American economy and reduce its capacity to repay its debts. The, a, a similar analysis can be made for Western Europe, the first continent to follow the American lead after the Second World War. Nowadays, European elites 
uh, have become so decadent that they don't remember or understand that borders are uh, essential everywhere in the living kingdom to protect the wealth created by those living inside the, those borders. Every living cell has a border, the cellular membrane. All living organisms, plants and animals have a skin or the equivalent. All the families of the world have houses with doors and locks to protect their belongings. And throughout history, tribes and nations, even the nomads, had territories with known borders. The baby boomers who now lead Europe have degenerated so much that they themselves organized the artificial destruction of the, of the homelands geography and history gave them. It is obvious with the present invasion of Europe by millions of poor Muslims. In modern day Europe, the elites do as if they didn't understand that Islam is not a race but an ideology that openly discriminates against women and non-Muslims. They even passed laws to impede Europeans to see the truth about what is really happening in their neighborhoods, while they let totally free foreign-born imams who publicly threaten those they dislike. No wonder that the majority of the British population voted to quit the European unions without listening to their leaders who uh, recommended a no vote. The situation is not more promising on the other continents where mass urbanization and mass industrialization uh, are presently killing the last natural environments we all depend on to produce the air, the water and the food we consume. The 8 or 9 billion people we will soon be on this planet, multiplied by their future American-like overconsumption, make certain that the Western civilization will not be the only one to crumble during the 21st century. Since mankind refuses to use its intelligence to reduce the environmental effects of its endless industrial growth, all present day civilization will collapse, not only the Western world. That means that from now onwards and for many centuries, the laws of economics and sociology that made history in the past will be replaced by the much more murderous laws of biology. Of course, mankind will not be wiped out. As I said elsewhere, our ancestors survived to much worse than that in the last four billion years. But the 21st century will probably feel like a very long century. So many things will happen that each year will feel like a decade. It's already like that. It will be one of the consequences of the present uh, acceleration of history. I talk about all that in the book I published on Amazon.ca. As usual, I thank you to subscribe to my channel, to recommend this video to your friends, and to give it the thumbs up. See you next time.